You have to stand fairly close, that's it. Can you turn the bowl a little bit more away from me? Just tiny, just a tiny bit that way. That's it. That's lovely now. And you stay there and watch as though she's gonna fall. <laughs> Oi! Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Whoopsie daisy. Let me catch it. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Tickle, tickle, tickle. I'm coming to get you. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> My nose is just right. Hello. She's gorgeous. Peepo. Here we go. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Amy. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Now, just take all her clothes off for me, and what we'll do is we'll do one in the bowl. I don't take very many, but the ones I do take generally are spot on. Yeah, and they have what, to be. what is it you're looking for, what do the parents want? They want a smile. They want uh, the child looking at, out of the picture at them with big, open, grinning eyes. They, we do take creative photographs, but generally speaking, they don't buy them. They appreciate them, but they don't want to look at them because they want the baby to be saying to them out of the picture, I love you. Okay, if you can just bob down there. Mm -hmm. just the bo you can go down, keep your hand on the bottom, but just that's it. Hello, hello, hello. Dribbles, listen, listen. Say, I don't like my face wiped. No, I don't. I don't like my face wiped. I can see you. Your buffles. Yes, you are. Your buffles. Yes. Your gorgy porgy. Dribble, dribble. Dribble, dribble. Listen, listen. Poser, aren't you? Hey, come on. Right, let's go onwards. Now we're, we're storming on through here. Now, <laughs> that's it. Now, you hold that again that way. Put the flower so that you can see me. That's right, and you look at me. That's it, and you bring your little head around this way again. You're so sweet. Look at these curls. Did you curl them up especially? Did you have those curled up? My nana done Your nana did that, did she? Not your grandma, your nana, because you haven't got a grandma, you've got a nana, haven't you? That's right. Now then, are we ready? Which animal, are you listening? Put your little shoulders down, gently. Which animal do you think goes? Are you listening? Are you listening? Hold the flowers, hold the flowers. Goes moo. Um, a dog. Yes, brilliant. Very good. Very good. Now then. In the future, when they look back, they want to remember a happy childhood. And so the picture's going all the way through three smiles in the first year and then continuing on smiling satisfies the need later on to realise that that child has been happy. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Yes, 
Jesse, take the ink off my face. No. Is this all right? Good. Okay. Yeah, all right. It just is what it is. Yeah. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's good. Come on, stay. <laughs> no, no, you're on your own, They learned. They learned. Well, we learned how to get actually, mom hate us. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> only once in a while. That's actually pretty immaterial. But the thing was, we take the picture. They'd look at it. They'd realize it wasn't any good. And we'd talk about what would make it better. Yeah. And we'd go back and do it over we'll again. We'll try to do it again. And then, I mean, in some cases, we'd think we wanted a certain kind of picture, and we'd go back and they'd give me some awful look, and it would be an even better picture. So, yeah, I mean, that's. Well, also, the time she'd say, one more picture, and turn well, out to be like 15, we'd get really pissed off. And then I'd have the picture, 15 <laughs> did, negatives into it. Thing. It's just one more. I only have one more negative, and it's like, oh. Wait, oh yeah, I, uh, there's 15 more right, in the thing, I don't know how negative. that happened, but just one more, okay? Oh, just like rubies. blowing bubbles. She's oh, so cool. blowing bubbles. She's so cool. I look She's like a rag doll. doll. She's like, oh, my face is all like... Uh -huh. I guess I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> no, you didn't. That was the funniest part, because we tried it before, and she was like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and it didn't work, so the and next so you time, thought it was cool. Mom, mom's like, Jenna, look like you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Like, she looks pretty much like she I has know. to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe she did by then. <laughs> 20 minutes later. Well, I, can I do go to the bathroom. <laughs> First handed me Emmett. I had never, that was the first child I had ever held in my life. I wasn't a babysitter. I wasn't a, you know, coochie coo under the chin kind of mother. I never even held a baby. So I was, of course, astounded and overwhelmed and just enraptured by the whole phenomenon of this child. And then as they grew, I mean, I, I guess every parent does this. They think their child is the most amazing, m marvelous thing that's ever on the earth. And that's ha what happened to me. And those photographs just reflect that astonishment and gratitude and I mean, I'd fall on my knees in Thanksgiving when I'd get a good picture you know it's just this is it I've got them you know just for an instant a thirtieth of a second anyway that's that's what it was it's amazement so why do you think most people take such insipid pictures of children maybe they're afraid to see what they've they're gonna lose you know maybe that's it I don't know I think most people actually are afraid to sort of plumb the depths of children. I think that they don't, they don't really know what's in there, and they're afraid to find out. Children are, you know, complicated creatures. Hey Hook, hey Hook, I had to hold that one for a while. You're like, look angry, Jesse. Oh, that picture. And Jenna's like oh, off in the corner, like exciting. pretending to play the flute on a snorkel, and right. these people are like laughing, and I'm like, Look angry, look angry. <laughs> Think angry thoughts. <laughs> Usually I don't even have to ask you. <laughs> Thank you.
The camera was set up. Jesse did that all summer long, hung off that hay hook. Because we, we did all that. We would like attach a chair to it and you could swing on it or you could like swing or flip or jump, you know. It's just like an off purpose fun maker thing, you know. So it just sort of happened. And they're genuinely involved in a conversation on the left, and the woman on the right is genuinely reading a magazine. And there's only two negatives of that picture. I mean, I shot one slide, took it out, took another one, and that's it. That's rare for me. That, that's a real snapshot. Hey, hook. And yet it's the one picture that everybody always, you know, jumps on and thinks it's, like, carefully posed and everything is placed in the scene. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, that really is a snapshot. You know, I was interviewed by this guy for the New York Times, and he made much of the fact that I don't remember my childhood, and letters poured into the New York Times magazine after this article came out, and everyone said, oh, well, clearly she was abused by her father, which is why she can't remember, you know, my courtly father. You know, the whole idea is just a completely anathema to me, but that I don't remember much about my childhood, basically, because I think it was so ordinary. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't suburban ordinary. It just was sort of, just, it just went away. It just happened. It passed. But there's a qual there's a sort of there's a quality that go where they went through my childhood, you know this this sort of living in the country, this sort of wild, naked freedom that I had as a child that I think they had at least for the period of time that I photographed them. Southerners, you know, adopt this unique sense of groundedness. Or maybe they're just mired, I don't know which it is. <laughs> maybe it's quicksand. I don't know. But, yeah, I grew up. My, um, my parents' house is about three miles away. So, yeah, I grew up right here. From the time I went away at 14, I knew I had to come back here. It's visceral. It's, it's in your gut. I don't know. It's very real to me, though. Yeah. I think the kids have it, too. You feel it when you're not here. That's how you know. Which, which brings me to that whole idea that Southerners have the, their own peculiar way of viewing the past and memory. That memory for a Southerner is something that's that you have to will yourself to produce, you know, and then you sort of overlay it with a, with a layer of sentiment that, you know, that, that, that is inexcusable in the rest of the world, but Southerners don't view sentimentality as sort of a character flaw. Anyway, that's what, what those pictures, I mean, they, they, they come out of that whole notion that, that memory is something you actually dredge up and, and bring up and produce, you know. It's not something that just sort of comes effortlessly. It actually comes with a certain degree of work and pain sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, when I look at those pictures, I, I remember my childhood, and I remember some of the pain of my childhood. I mean, everybody has a painful childhood. You wouldn't be a character if you didn't. this awful judging thing that I just couldn't stand. And it's not like mom's pictures, her taking those pictures did nothing to us, but what people put on them and what people wanted them to be or thought they were is what hurt us the most. It's the people trying to save us were the people that ended up hurting us. And it was just so awful because you just wanted to yell at them, you know, just be like, no, I'm fine, you're hurting me. And it just was just useless. So. It's true that pictures turned out to be sort of like Rorschach tests, you know. It said a lot more about the people who were looking at them than about the pictures themselves. I mean, that observation's been made many times, but it's true. And 
of course, the pictures often weren't about the children. They were about all children or some children, but not necessarily these children living this particular life. You know, they, they, they were in some cases fictions. just as much actors as people on the stage or in a movie because she was trying to portray like a a sort of like undercurrent to childhood that people don't really see you know and so it wasn't us it wasn't you know really Jesse Emmett and Virginia it was like this could be your kid this is all children you know it wasn't until I was deep into it that I realized that I would I was taking pictures that were going to change these children's lives you know inevitably and I didn't know if it was going to be good for them. But by that time, the pictures had been made, the book had been published, or, you know, was about to be published. The die was cast, and if I was going to be, you know, a bad mother, it was, you know, that was, there was nothing I could do about it other than be the best mother I could be uh, outside of taking these pictures. I don't like the one where I'm with the yard eggs. Oh, I and I don't like... that picture. I love, that's the best one. Oh, I know one that um, the mm. the three of us in the water. That oh. was that was so cold. Yeah, it Wait, got cold. But you don't yeah, like and that's not a very good. Picture. I don't like the taking of the picture, so it makes me kind of have a grudge against the picture. All right, I can understand that. That makes See? sense. I have very family similar. pictures. Some of them are so good. I like wet bed. So, what's your favorite photograph, Sally? Oh. Oh, what about the perfect tomato? I, I said I think the perfect one. tomato. Is, I uh, thought that, so. <laughs> once I took that picture, I, I thought I could die and go to heaven. And oh, that was like what? sheer luck. Turn around, like accidentally bump the thing. It was one of those like, oh my god, situations. Yeah. It's like the perfect man. Yeah, That's it was one just breathtaking. About. Just that was the one I fell on on my knees in Thanksgiving. I mean, I knew. I mean, if the negative one screwed up, I knew I had just a brilliant picture. That's why it just, just the was tomato was in focus, because she didn't have time to focus anything else. She it's just, just like all of stepped us down onto the table, just oh, this gosh. perfect and little arc of humanity <laughs> going onto the table. It's just, oh, <laughs> break your heart. Well, we have regular yeah. scrapbooks, too, yeah. actually. Yeah. We yeah. yeah, yeah, we do all those normal pictures. For a long time, it was just like I'd see your pictures in places, and then you know it's like one day you wake up and realize that you're like living with a goddess that she's just creating these like unbelievable masterpieces. Not that she's not like a real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, can you deal with this? And could you put away your laundry? Could you make your bed? And I'm like, ugh. And then Dad's like, put water in the pool. And oh God, can I have some free time? So, uh, yeah, I just r I ran out of ideas. The well did run dry, and it does happen. But it was easy because you can segue from the family pictures into the landscapes pretty, or I could, pretty easily. It was a natural segue between those two. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you how you felt when your mum started taking the landscape pictures. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I felt kind of dejected because... Yeah, I, she'd always been taking pictures of us, so it was... I'm not very good at changes, so it wasn't that great. I was very upset. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. It took us for a long time to figure out, like, why. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, kind of obvious. Point? But finally we were like, oh, because it was like this... It was a big deal to me. It was too yeah, much of a change. It was like, and it was like Mom took pictures of her, so she felt like it was this closeness, oh, yeah. so when... She like started another body of art and it was like, wait a I know, minute. it was kind of like a different lifestyle being thrown away, kind of, because that, that was what we had always do. So when she started taking landscapes, it was kind of like, um, what do we do? You know, <laughs> it wasn't, it was really strange. Um, she felt really hurt that I was photographing something other than her. But the other kids, I think, were kind of relieved because they were getting to be teenagers and I guess it wasn't, they weren't so inextricably bound to the pictures. I mean, these kids were just... Our relationship was was taking pictures. I mean, you know, in addition to making peanut butter sandwiches, but it was they're teenagers. I mean, it's difficult to look at them. They're so, you know, they've 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 turned. They've they've gone on. They've 
they've shed their, you know, skins and their 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 own people now. They're they're gone. I guess they just walked out of the picture. <laughs> Or maybe I shooed them out, I don't know. I just photograph to show what people do when they leave when they leave their home. The same which everybody has done after they have turned to 16 or 15 and they have gone out of the ma magic circle of magic circle of home and school so it's their first uh, freedom Get on. I can't actually say who are they, who I pick up there. It's just something that interests me. Maybe they are, they are so, so normal, normal or so, so, so. Uh, they look a little bit different, or then they, in their eye, they something, something, something that they know. They. they they know what, what they are. Ha 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 The main point might be might be that uh, the winter is so long, and everybody's everybody's just staying inside, and they can't see anybody else, and it's totally freezing and totally darkness. 
So when summer is coming, so it's like uh, you are like a newborn baby. You just oh, still the melancholy is so deep in our hearts. But it or the or the mad some kind of madness which which is not in any other in any other country in Europe. But I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's still a power and not the lack of something. Sä voit levätä he siellä itse asiassa. Teppä siihen. Ei puhe, pistä nyt kuntoon. Papää, papäätä siihen. Noi. Pailando, pailando. Hän laitse käsi alas, laitse käsi. Siellä on nyt kun pommi erosimpaa. Somehow, so, somehow I, I think that uh, uh, to be a young, it's not so smi smiling, smiling time. It's it's much. It's so very complicated time. <laughs> Like that's good, yeah. Yeah. Maybe put this hand where the knife is behind you a little bit. Yeah. Like this or something. Mainly we just looked for boys because women know how to be watched, know how to be looked at. And I realized that I probably use boys because they don't. And that's more exciting for me. With boys, there's always, I think there's an extended period of perfection. I mean, everyone, you know, all kids are sort of, in a way, clear-faced, and they're, they're not having the burden of experience on them. And I think boys have it longer. And so I just, I like, that's why I like to take pictures of boys, because they're kind of carriers of this um, immunity. But of course, that's only a fantasy for me, because I'm not a boy, so I have no idea what it's like to be a boy. Perfect. Not smiling though. Each thing has its own clue. You know, he was wearing a yarmulke, but he also had a U.S. insignia. I think I, you know, I chose Sven on purpose because he was the least likely Jewish boy in the room. 
to use the yarmulke was just another, you know, it's like changing someone's gender, someone's religion. It looks really good to send a confusing message to me. It's really um, exciting to play around. She's going to tape uh, her breasts into uh, so they're like flatter, so... So she can wear like a shirt open, and it looks like she doesn't have breasts. Right. It's kind of like an extreme bra. Like what they do in high fashion for runway shows. Perfect. The work that I do with Karn, my niece, is like really kind of special because we know each other really well mm -hmm. and we have always felt a connection. What's the main theme that you explore through the pictures of Karn? Well, I guess kind of being a boy and, you know, maybe more than being a boy, not being a girl, you know, it's more about, because mm. it's not like being, we are, like, in a way, boys, so it's not like we're being a boy, it's like we're not being a girl. And it's okay with your family? Think yeah, at first. first I just told them how we took pictures and then I showed just a little picture and then I just showed them and they said, oh. I mean, I was worried because I thought, God, they're going to think, you know, I'm taking the children of the family into the woods and, <laughs> you know, dressing them up. But I think that even they see in the pictures the restraint. I think they clearly see that um, I could have done something else and I didn't. Like your grandmother, you know, she puts these pictures up and they're just pretty pictures of her grandchildren and, you know, she trusts me, she trusts you, so she doesn't really think any further about what yeah. it means. It's not like she's going to be like, you know, in a pride march or anything. <laughs> okay, Karen, face me front. Connection between the pictures of boys and your work with Karen. It's about costume and masquerade, and about um, the possibilities of youth. Okay, Karen, put your shirt on. That's too bizarre. <laughs> want to please adults and and I'm sure that they uh, know that that adults want to have this um, rosy picture of them and um, and 
you know, produce it. Um, and maybe when they're doing it for each other or they're behind the camera, that, that changes. All I could see was it was black and red. Everything around me was black and red. And somebody was chasing me. And they were trying to, and they were trying to get me. And I started running. And then I came to a dead end. And I was trying to climb the fence. But every time I would climb the fence, the fence would get hotter and hotter and hotter. And then eventually the person got me. I had a dream the first day of kindergarten before the first day. I had dreamed that the teacher, she was chasing me and she was going to get me because she had a butcher's knife. I, I dreamed that I was, I was on stage and I was at the podium talking about something and this dog came up running after me and I was running and it got my shirt and it ate me. It ate you all up? Wow. <laughs> like um, my little brother was missing. Then he showed up on the screen door and he started ripping it. And then, like, as soon as he started ripping it, he turned into, like, this blue monster with hair on his face and horns and stuff. Um, I was watching TV. My mom was on the phone with somebody. And then this guy, he broke down the door and he ran into our, in my house and he grabbed me. And then he started running down the hallway to get my mom. And it was like he was like Wolfman or something. He had his hair all over his face. It was so, how can you make some pictures of those things? You could go to the um, to Beauty Bear and get some brown hair, some brown fake hair, and then attach it to a man that's <laughs> kind of muscular and have them try to grab you. But how would you take a picture of yourself? Because you're going to be taking the picture. Somebody else can take you. Somebody like yeah. your mom and dad can push the button for you while you're posing. I remember one when I was five years old. Yeah, what was it? My mom, she t she turned into a rat, and my dad turned into a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody have any idea how you can make a picture of that? In a sense, working with other people is easier because you don't ha it all doesn't all have to hop out of your head. But on the other hand, it's it's more difficult because you have to sit back and wait and see what's happening. They're the pictures that I want to see. I mean, they're pictures that I want to show. Um, they're how I want to show something. And I don't particularly want to do it all by myself. It doesn't interest me. It doesn't interest me to put a frame on somebody's world. It interests me to bring the pictures out of the world, to help bring the pictures out of that world. OK, that's good, Romeo. No, you're doing it too fast, and you're moving the Good camera. Ideas. I want you to practice this. When you get ready to shoot, I want you to put your feet together. I want you to be like a statue. Put the camera up to your eye. And when you get ready to take a picture, the only thing that should move is this finger right here. You have to make a decision about what you want in your picture to be the most important thing. And which which you want to be in focus I want like to be the most important thing. you want to be the most important thing let's say i'm going to take a picture yeah of of you two right here okay now and i'm going to take it from here i want to take it from here but what's happening is that i'm maybe 3 feet away from you and i'm and maybe 5 or 6 feet away from you right so what do you think i'd do well if i put it in between and the only thing that's going to turn out really sharp is going to be the space in between the two desks. And that's not very important, right? <laughs> so I've got to decide. I could decide, well, that I was really more interested in him. And, and then I could, he could be sharp, and then she would be blurry. She would be bigger, but she would be blurry. So Why you don't just you do it with the person that came up with the idea? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I think that I work with, with children because it's, it's something that's very natural to me. I mean, I'm the oldest of six children, and I always played with my brothers and sisters. And um, when I first started photographing, what I, what I photographed was them and I used them to um, photograph my own childhood and my own feelings about being trapped as, as a child, I think. I remember very little. I just remember being not being very happy. I remember being a little too aware of what was going on. Um, between people, and uh, I can remember when I was, um, I think in first grade, sitting on the swing and watching the, the children play and thinking, oh, you know, I wish I was young again. <laughs> How old were you in I, I was about six or seven. Wait! Give me action! It's not right. Something's not right. Let's take it straight way. <coughs> All right. Take it straight. Two, one. Okay, you got your picture? Yeah. You can't see the dogs. Yes, I just have to ask these in my dream because can't find the markers. This is the dream where I um I was I dreamed I was a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> This is my dream where I was trapped in a cage and I had to use the fireplace thing. Lean over. But then mommy and daddy wouldn't show. I like this one. Could you put the other one? Does it look like they're chasing me? Uh, yes, sort of. Am I in the picture? My face. Hold on. I can't stand here for long. Doggone, they're small. I think that the children's, when they're making them, are very much theirs when they make them. I'm not there, um, and nor do I like pictures that they've taken when I'm there. I feel, I feel that there's something missing. I'm sure that I have an influence on, on what they do and, and what they do for me in the camera. I mean, I, I try not, not to as much as I can, but I don't think um, I'm... I don't think it's possible to erase myself, nor do I want to erase myself. I'm taking a picture of my little brother jump off the swings like he's flying. Go! 
here he is, right there. This one's on my mom. She's walking on water. This one is about my nightmare. My little brother, he ran away, and then he came back, and then he turned into a monster. This is my brother, hit by a car, and I made him put his head under the car a little, and it looks like he got run over. Katie, what Daddy's going to do to you is he's going to run. He's going to, like, he's, like, going to be right here, and he's going to scoot you up, uh, and then, like, like this, with your feet sticking out like this. <laughs> I'm not doing it right here, but he's going to do that to you while he has his monster mask on, and then he's going to be, like, right, right, right around right here, Katie, and then I'm going to take the picture, okay? Here. You got that? Did you hear that, Katie? I heard it. So I wear the mask, I pick Katie up. You said her feet are supposed to be hmm? sticking out this way? Like this. Okay. You pick the way you're heading. And where would you like to take your picture at? Um, I think you're going to like be somewhere right here, and I'm going to be somewhere maybe right back here. So when I come around there, do I stop? Yeah. We don't need sound effects, do we? No. <laughs> and let me tell you exactly where you're going to stop, because I have to set my camera okay. for where you're going to be, how many right. feet away you're going to be from me. Daddy. Do you need the light on in there? What? Do you need the light on? I got it. Here, I'll turn. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be like right here. Yeah. And then I'm going to be like right here. Okay. All right, I think I got it. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. <gasps> All right, Katie, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Remember it's Daddy, okay? You ready? <laughs> I think it like this. You ready, Kate? Yeah. All right, here we go. Keep going to your end. Maybe there's an interior world that we remember that's that's different than the exterior world i don't know i don't know i mean maybe childhood is is painful for for all of us and the, and that's and that's what some of us remember and and that's maybe if you have direct access to expressing yourself maybe that's what comes out I really like to work with kids who are like between the ages of 9 and 13, right before they hit puberty. They're very creative and they don't censor themselves at that point. I mean, they make whatever image that, that they choose to make. The first project I did in, in um, Kentucky, I was with the same kids for five years and there were some amazing photographers. And then at a certain point when they um, reached puberty, they grew away from me and grew away from photography. It was, it was very hard for me, and it was hard for them too because they knew it was hard for me. And uh, they knew it was over, I didn't know it was over. And um, with experience now, I've, I've learned to, to let them go. series continues next Monday at 12.55. Coming up in a moment on four art historians hope to uncover the origins and meaning of Botticelli's masterpiece, Primavera.